morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, according to the time zones that you joined us. So uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Vikas, and I'm one of the marketing manager at Kelton Tech. And uh, in, in today's webinar, we will be learning what's new in Web Methods 9.12, which is presented by Yogesh Demati, carrying about 15 years' experience in Software AG's digital business platform. Along with him, we also have uh, Dibakar Ghosh, who is one of our champion sales guy and uh, one of the uh, enthusiasts about uh, digital, uh, you know, uh, transformation. Well, uh, before before going into the webinar today, a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if if you have any questions during the presentation, please drop in a message on the control panel of GoToWebinar, and we will bring them up uh, at the end of the session, where we allocated about five minutes for it. And also, let me uh, just in, uh, uh, tell you that this call is being recorded and uh, will be available. And uh, we, we can send out an email uh, right after the uh, session is completed. So without further ado, let me you know uh, uh, forward this to uh, Dibakar. So Dibakar and Yogesh, we have a beautiful audience right over there. So I'm sure uh, you know uh, we'll be able to learn more about what what's uh, you know uh, coming up in uh, Web Methods 9.12. Thank you so much, Vikas. Uh, uh, Yogesh, welcome. Uh, this is Debakar. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to all the people. Uh, thank you for joining us in the mid of the week and taking our time today for the webinar. As Vikas mentioned, uh, today's webinar uh, would obviously focus on the enhancements and features introduced on the latest Web Methods 9.12. I would like to give you a brief introduction on the Kelton Tech as well. We are a born digital company. We are 24 years old, uh, founded in 1993. We have footprint across globe with major operations in North America, UK, Ireland, and India. We have a wide range of clientele, uh, right from the startups to the Fortune 500 companies. Our core strengths are people and processes. Apart from being an ISO 9001 company, we are also CMMI level 3 certified. We are also listed in major stock exchanges in India. Uh, our team size is somewhere around north of 1200 right now, which means we are big enough to matter, but small enough to care about our clients. Uh, we have partnerships with uh, most of the mega, mega vendors in the market. We are technology agnostic uh, and always try to provide the best possible solutions specific to the, our client needs. We do have our uh, global offshore delivery centers in uh, Gurgaon and Hyderabad, somewhere around uh, 750 plus employees there. We have, uh, with our state-of-the-art development centers, uh, there we, we are able to provide around uh, sometimes up to 60% of our uh, uh, cost savings with our clients. We have off-site and near-shore delivery centers in Ireland and USA. We, the major uh, business units that we have, uh, we have around five here. One is uh, digital, biz digital transformation business unit, which harnesses the power of digital technologies and data to create competitive advantage. We have digital connected enterprise, which deals with uh, connecting the dots in your digital systems of engagement. It also provides the insight into records and core IT. We also deliver end-to-end -end SAP solutions as a SAP certified growth partner. Our professional services practice provides uh, subject matter expertise and cutting-edge technology consulting to promote strategic agility. And fifth important pillar right now is outsourced product development, where we deliver a minimum of about uh, a viable product in around 12 weeks or so with high quality and high performance uh, product development. With this, uh, uh, I would like uh, Yogesh to start with the presentation right away. Take it away, Yogesh. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks for introduction, uh, Dibakar and uh, Vikas, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, taking time off your schedule to attend this webinar. Uh, before I jump into the topic, I'll just give you overview of uh, uh, what Software AG's digital business platform is. So as we know, Software AG helps the customer Customers define the strategy for how to undertake the digital transformation by providing the capabilities from organizations to align the transformation with their business strategy, manage risks and compliance, 
and find efficiencies within their application portfolio to drive cost savings. So what you see on the screen is Software Edge's digital business platform uh, which powers digital transformation to enable any organization to become a digital enterprise and Web Methods product suite uh, which spans across analytics and decisions, process, integration, or in-memory data you know, helps you to achieve uh, this transformation. So uh, Web Methods 9.12 release, the latest release uh, coming to the market, uh, provides significant enhancements in every area that is part of Web Methods product suite, whether it is integration, API management, process development, and operational intelligence or there are some under the hood changes which really makes the difference the way product performs and provides value to the customers. So we will go through all these uh, enhancements in detail in the subsequent slides. So let's jump on to web methods integration. What are the new changes introduced in the integration area of the platform? So uh, as we know web methods integration platform provides a proven and robust platform to rapidly integrate whether they are systems, services, processes, business partners, devices or data. Now everyone is talking about IoT. Uh, the release of 9.12 provides digital event services as the new mechanism for event-based integration uh, between various software energy components. So this really, you know, if you take example of you know, current mechanism prior to web methods 9.12, uh, integration server and APAMA, even though they are part of the same product, family, they need to have some kind of JMS compliant mechanism like universal messaging or any other JMS broker which can facilitate the communication. But now with release 9.12, uh, digital event services will provide this backbone of providing the commun communication uh, infrastructure uh, between these two components. So integration server can publish uh, messages as native publishable documents as digital events and APAMA can subscribe to these documents as native APAMA events and then it will take actions based on the business logic and rules defined in the monitor script or your APAMA logic. The second important feature is the enhanced mapping construct introduced in uh, web methods 9.12. So this really simplifies the mapping of array of input documents to target with a single mapping step defined as for each, uh, there is no need to loop through an array of for simple task of mapping the field. So if you see the current approach prior to 9.12 uh, to map array of elements from source to target, you need to loop through the element, probably use out of box API services like add to uh, document list or add to string list. That all complexity is gone. So this will even allow citizen developers like business analysts to do the mapping of array fields from source to the target. Additionally, this mapping enhancement allows developers to test the map step without executing the entire flow service. So if there are complex map steps in your integration and if you want to know what's problem with a specific map step, there is no need to run the entire flow service. You can execute a single map step and identify if there is any issue in that service. Uh, designer will now let you visually compare and merge integration server assets uh, such as JMS triggers, adapter services and connections. So this will really result in improved development and debugging uh, from development perspective. There are some additional features uh, for de developers. Uh, now you need this uh, test framework called WM Test Suite is available as a product. It is officially supported by web methods and it is made available through Software Edge installer. This will allow developers to run automated unit tests for continuous development and continuous integration. Now, on this same topic, uh, from the DevOps perspective, web methods is also providing you the facility of having a local installation of IS. So this was available in prior versions as well, but this is coming more of as integrated product from the DevOps perspective perspective. So developers with their local installation of IS will connect to the VCS repository and then take care of continuous integration, continuous development approach to build and deploy to the real dev environment. There are few more changes under the hood. Uh, 
ability to search for individual variables and identify all the references to those variables in code base improving the overall dependency management uh, from cloud streams perspective a generic odata connector is now available with support for 2.0 specification and limited su support for 4.0 specification so what this means is the popular cloud apps you can write your CRUD applications, CRUD, create, read, update, delete, using the generic OData connector. And from the security perspective, cloud streams will support TLS 1.1 and 1.2 for higher security. This is very important feature considering major SaaS vendors like Salesforce who are enforcing higher security standards and mandating TLS 1.1 or 1.2 for connectivity with their apps. From the performance perspective, IS will now provide enhanced distributed caching functionality including ability to prefetch and cache the service data at the startup time or using a distributed cache for service results caching. You have a better control of service cache now, you can delete a specific entry from cache. This will result in a significant performance improvement for the services which really uh, don't rely on the back backend data and always you know provide consistent results uh, uh, in your overall you know, integration. IS now supports out of the box scripts to create Docker integration server images. So this is the feature I like most, the support for microservices architecture. Now you have a greater flexibility from architecture perspective whether you want to use integration server in a monolith architecture or microservice architecture it's now your choice so you have a, you can ensure high availability of specific functionality by deploying those high uh, uh, in demand services in small containers as microservices and let api gateway take care of that orchestration we will talk more about api gateway in the subsequent slides uh, there is a new very interesting feature called web methods application platform which provides service browser capabilities so what it means is uh, you can get the information of services exposed to IS right in the designer and you can type the name of the service and it will show you some you know some information like what is the class path or where that service is located so there is also video available on tech community on how to use this feature uh, this will really uh, improve quality of life from a uh, development perspective there are few changes on the trading network side as well Trading networks is now tightly integrated with web methods active transfer for better management and monitoring of files or documents that are being exchanged. You can even select active transfer as the delivery method in trading networks and set the endpoints that active transfer connects with while exchanging these documents. The documents, whatever are delivered through active transfer, those can, can be monitored directly in the transactions page. So it really provides a unified view and visibility in the transaction management especially from the file transfer perspective also from the de deployment or architecture perspective the dependency uh, what we would like to call codependency between trading networks and active transfer is gone so there is no need to have both of them run on, on the same is you can ha have the flexibility of installing trading networks and active tra transfer wherever you want the new perspective introduced in designer called visual navigator will provide additional flexibility to easily see the dependencies in the application platform so this is one of those features where they're trying to improve the uh, quality of life for developers uh, more control on refactoring or searching of the services uh, service browser now visual navigator overall you know from making it a really devops product there are interesting new adapters being added in this release. Uh, Web Methods 9.12 can now be used as a content service platform integrator with the introduction of new adapters in the CSM space, content service managers. There are brand new adapters for Documentum, FileNet, SharePoint, and Alfresco. And there are also improvements in the JDBC adapter space to support major big data platforms like Hadoop, uh, which will help ESB to also function as a big data gateway. So we, we will have you know follow presentation 
later uh, sometime next month to explore these specific features, how you can use Web Methods platform as a big, big data gateway and uh, we will inform you when that is arranged. So let's jump on to the next topic, uh, API management. So Web Methods 9.12 is the first release of Web Methods API gateway. Uh, what this means is API gateway will become a single gateway way combining the current capabilities of enterprise gateway or reverse proxy and web methods mediator. The architecture is now very simplified and streamlined uh, to help in easy, easy deployment especially there is no dependency with the central site from API and policy management perspective. API gateway also has a dedicated web application or web UI to manage API policies, consumer application and administrative activities. In the API management suite, the second product is API portal, which provides enhanced support for API monetization now. So there are things like API packages, API gallery, API plans you can define uh, with specified pricing. And those packages are introduced in this release of API portal. These plans provide you know, information about pricing, quality of service terms defined within them. Uh, there are some technical changes in the API management suite now, uh, central site and mediator provide the HTTP patch verb which was not supported earlier uh, with this release and API management is really now a competitive API management offering either it is for, for your standalone use case or it can act as a complementary to your integration infrastructure to provide complete solution from your API requirement perspective. The next pillar I would like to call uh, from Web Methods product suite perspective is process development. There are significant enhancements in this area as well. Uh, with the tight integration between process engine and agile apps, uh, it will allow you for invocation of agile apps case from a BPM process perspective. Uh, this integration between agile apps and BPM also allows uh, to address the needs of both IT and citizen developers. So what this means is with Web Methods BPM is sweet now you can not only do orchestration of your processes, tasks or rules but also do case management, visual forms, app logic, uh, discovery, or operational or predictive analytics. Uh, the business console in MWS uh, provides visibility into case, task and processes, uh, provides unified structured and unstructured processing. From the performance perspective, Web Methods Agile app now supports Terracotta EH cache as an option for storing object metadata in the cache. And under the hood change I would like to highlight here is the WM task client page that we use for task management or workflow capability. It will now use universal messaging as a transportation mechanism. So this architecture changes, you know, this architecture change basically enhances the uh, performance of your workflow or uh, business process uh, significantly. The next important part of this suite is operational intelligence. So from operational intelligence perspective there are significant changes in my zone and process performance manager as well. Presto which was the dashboarding tool in the earlier releases is gone now. My zone next gen visual analytics the current release 9.12 is a new product which provides ad hoc analysis of streaming and historical data from multiple sources. Optimized for infrastructure has been improved to monitor named objects or durable subscribers for universal messaging. Command Central can monitor and control process performance manage remotely. It provides a greater control of process performance manager. You can start, stop or manage your PPM from Command Central itself. And the overall simplified process flow visualization to use along with classic process flow capability will reduce the overall complexity in the operational intelligence domain. So with this improved user face, the overall ease of use uh, will be much better in the operational intelligence space of the web method suite. So I would like to highlight the support lifecycle officially supported from web methods. Once a product becomes available, uh, becomes a GA generally available, it is available for st standard maintenance for three years where you get full support from web methods, new fixes and service packs are issued for any issues that you may encounter. 
end of maintenance is reached after three years where you enter into a phase of a limited support. So this phase lasts for one year where there are fixes and patches are available only for existing issues. There are no new fixes provided from web method support. There is one option where you can buy extended support up to four years. That is you know, kind of expensive. So this is really a phase, end of maintenance is a phase where you should think about upgrading your current version of web methods to the latest release. Uh, once end of support is reached at the end of this year, you have to rely on the self-service mechanism where there is no support from web methods and you have to access you know, knowledge base or tech community articles to keep supporting your infrastructure. There are supported upgrade paths from web methods whether you are on release 6.1 or 6.5 all the way to 9.12 you either have to take certain hops come to a supported release and then migrate to 9.12 or depending on whatever release you are on you can also do side by side upgrade. So up projects you know upgrade projects Projects are typically very complicated. Uh, there are various reasons why you choose to upgrade to the latest release. One of the most popular reasons is current version is nearing end of support or end of maintenance. So this is very important. You don't want to run a risk of running on unsupported platform. Uh, the next popular reason of for upgrading to the latest release is using the new features available in the latest version. So whether it is using visual comparator or using big data gateway or new adapters like documentum and file name, whatever new features are available in the latest version, you want to leverage them to meet the business requirement. Or there might be a schedule upgrade and maintenance strategy within your organization where there is a CIO mandate that you must have a supported version of a major vendor product always running in production. Sometimes new version also resolves issues and problems in the previous version. So for example, if you see the significant improvement in cloud streams to support TLS 1.1 and 1.2, which was not supported in the previous releases. So if you are connecting to Salesforce uh, as part of your cloud strategy and you are on 8.2 release, you are running a risk of running on unsupported platforms. Salesforce has already stopped supporting previous version like SSL connectivity they don't like now. They are enforcing all their clients to use TLS 1.1 or 1.2. So it's really a mandate coming from cloud vendors where you must use the latest security standards and this new version will resolve these kind of issues. Sometimes clients like to use new products and latest release. So there are other drivers where developers also convince you know their business that they want to try out some of the features uh, from the innovation perspective. So from the upgrade perspective it's always better to follow a certain methodology. Uh, you need to take a holistic view of your areas of modernization. Uh, don't treat just as a version upgrade project but look at as a modernization project. Uh, look at what kind of modernization you can do from infrastructure perspective uh, moving from physical machines to virtual infrastructure, uh, more capacity planning, moving from monolith architecture to microservices architecture. What is your strategy to leverage the new features and capabilities? How they are going to benefit you to meet the requirements from business? Are you planning to do any SDLC improvement with the support for uh, WM test suite on DevOps, a way of doing things? Uh, Everyone is moving to Agile now. Are you planning to make changes in your SDLC life cycle? Uh, do a better version control of your flow services and web methods artifacts? And what is your overall strategy of stand up, migration, taste and cutover? So all these things you need to take into account while deciding on upgrade in your organization. So whenever you're planning for an upgrade, always consider these important points. Uh, check the system requirements from hardware perspective. Uh, make sure that capacity planning is in place from the multi-site high availability perspective. There is enough redundancy, disaster recovery available in case of any uh, business contingencies. Whatever hardware you are using really supports the uh, vendor product that you are going to install. Uh, what is your data migration strategy from old environment to new environment? What are you going to do with the transaction history or 
historical data that still resides in the old environment. Whether you want to purge the old data or re you really want to move the data from old environment to new environment that you need to think about carefully. In a, these, another important point from data data perspective is what should happen with in-flight transaction. Typically like long-running transactions, uh, pro procurement transactions like EDI or long-running business processes, you don't want to have them partially running in old version of uh, web methods and then partially running in new version of web methods. So what is your strategy from that perspective? And the most important point in any upgrade project is what is your testing strategy, whether you're going to do the regression testing and only looking at the features which are impacted with the latest release or are you planning to do the full testing, end-to-end -end testing, even involving your vendors, all the business partners, internal business units in your testing. And what is your testing strategy, whether you're going to do automated testing or manual testing, that also you need to think about. So it's always best to follow a documented approach as part of your upgrade procedure, do a def define and plan on upgrade path, determine your logical and physical architecture. So analysis and planning is the most important phase of any upgrade project. Uh, once you move to the upgrade path, follow the documented approach, rely on automation rather than doing the manual tasks and uh, come up with a repeatable procedure, leverage some kind of homegrown framework that you want to uh, deploy, whether it is a simple shell scripts or uh, moving your for moving your data from old environment to new environment you can either use vendors provided data migration scripts or you can even write your own homegrown scripts there what is your strategy for installation stand up and configuration uh, what how do you want to migrate and rectify code what is your strategy of regression testing uh, whether you want to take a big bang approach for cutover or you want to do a staggered deployment, all these things you need to consider very carefully in your upgrade procedure. Typically for this kind of project it's all, always important to consider what is the warranty and support you are looking for. So either there will be support for aggregate time frames from your vendors or you are looking for extended offline support from offshore or offsite. What to do with the delta knowledge that is coming in the latest release of the product. So how are you going to train your staff? So that is important consideration you need to make while making your upgrade decision. So again to highlight the important aspects of these kind of upgrade projects, make sure there is a minimum downtime during upgrade. Production verification is very important before you do the cutover. Always important to run at least a couple of production verification transactions and in the new production environment before you flip that switch on. Make sure you have a repeatable and automated procedure for multiple instances. Typically, many of the large enterprises will have architecture uh, segregated for you know different business units. So sometimes they will call as farms or stacks. So once you decide on one specific farm, make sure this strategy that you're following is repeatable and automated so you don't keep on reinventing the wheel for migrating next set of integrations or next business unit to the latest version. Sometimes there are technical constraints you need to factor in. What if your business partners or vendors are enforcing you to use the same host name and port number as part of upgrade? They really don't care what version of the product you are on. So you really have to make it transparent to your vendors and business partners. The host name and port number and in case if things don't go the way you want if there are unanticipated issues there should be a graceful back out uh, mechanism available where you can revert to the old version so we have done a lot of upgrade projects over 100 plus upgrade projects from the web methods perspective in the past uh, these are some of our success stories there is a famous quote uh, which says that if something is important for you and if you don't do very often, there is a guarantee that you will fail at it. So it's always best to work with experienced service provider like Kelton Tech who has a lot of success stories from the upgrade perspective. Uh, we have very significant advantage in the software edge space. We are experts in the integration space across various domains, whether it is utilities or finance or medical or transportation. For over 20 years, our consultants have served various industries and organizations in various functional domains. We have been engaged 
facilitating the modernization and reference architecture using custom accelerators and solution frameworks. Our certified team of analysts and engineers and solution architects, they are solely focused on Software Edge's digital business platform. We have non-revenue generating labs and COEs where people keep on working and exploring new features, kind of doing more like a beta testing of latest release of the product. And with our partnership with Software AG, we are a partner as well as a reseller for them. We have a greater insight and visibility into Software AG's roadmap to ensure future-proof architecture and modernization strategy. So I would highly encourage to talk to us if you are thinking about upgrade or want to discuss more on the latest release of web methods or any other product in the Software AG digital business platform. Um, that's all I have for today. Uh, I can take any questions uh, if you have right now or please feel free to send those questions uh, via email to us. We will be very happy to answer them and provide additional collateral or material to clarify your doubt. Well, uh, thanks, thanks, Yogesh. Uh, 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 it, it was very insightful. Uh, I, I know we, we are a bit uh, running short on time. We, we have taken uh, extra minute. There were a couple of questions coming in from the audience. Uh, so, uh, 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 guys, uh, what what we can do is, as Yogesh said, we we can consolidate all the questions what we have got, and I'll I'll take the inputs from Yogesh and I'll I'll send out an email to everyone on the questions, and also as I said. I'll send out the uh, video recording along with the presentation of today's webinar. And uh, yep, uh, you have been an awesome audience. Uh, so uh, we have a couple more sessions coming up. We'll, we'll keep you posted on uh, how we can, you know, uh, 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 see you uh, over there on, on on those webinars. So once again, thank you, everyone. Have a good day, and uh, you know, uh, the weekend is coming up. Uh, hope everyone have a great weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Yogesh. Thank you, Divakar. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you, Deepakar. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.